on the final phase of our consecration service. So amazing to have spent three hours. What do we tell God for blessing us with his presence? What do we tell God? Amen. I want to tell you, my friends, we as Seventh-day Adventists are known as the people of the world. What we have forgotten these days is to be people of prayer. Before you take a decision, pray to the Lord Almighty. Before you decide to study, pray. Before you shop, pray. Before you get your skirt, pray. Lord, is this the skirt you want me to buy? If we pray, God will speak to you. Lord, where do you want me to have dinner? Is this the restaurant? Is this the menu? If we have to worry about material things, what about your life? When you're going to marry someone, it affects your life here and in the world to come. God's chosen servant for this moment at the pulpit is Brother Ronald Robin, a final year dentistry student, but one who passionately loves the Lord, one who has been used mightily by God to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to touch many people's lives, not only on campus, but around. As a matter of fact, in two days, he will be one of the guest speakers in IYC, Indonesian Youth for Christ. I'm so humbled that despite his very busy schedule, when I requested him that if he can be a part of our group, he graciously consented. I would like to pray before he brings the Word of God. Father, we give you all the glory because the Holy Spirit is always willing to fill young people with fire. And those that are ready to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, and I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. Your young men shall dream dreams. This evening, it's not an exception. Thank you for Ronald Robin, your servant, whom you've chosen. And as you fill him with the Holy Spirit, Lord, I pray that you give him all the blessings of heaven. And I pray that you put a message. And I pray that you sanctify his lips. And as you take the live calls of altar from your throne and put it, may it unction your servant. May his thoughts be sanctified. May his power be from God. And as he leans on you, use him to consecrate us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Uh, as we bring this experience to a close, we have a very simple devotional to end it with. Our theme for this whole day has been closer. And I want to end with a simple theme of just growing closer and closer to God. The text is James chapter 4 and verse 8. The Bible says, Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Let us pray. Divine Father, we want to thank you for the privilege, the honor, and the gift of knowing that when a child of God desires to draw closer to God, you, O oh Lord, will pull out every block you will strike away anything that gets in the way because nothing can keep your people from being with their Savior. Father, we want to thank you for giving us the privilege to draw closer and yet closer and yet closer to our Father in heaven. Father, we have failed. Lord, I ask for forgiveness as I plead for myself and my brothers and sisters, Lord, we are guilty of growing close to men, but not close to God. Father, we are guilty. We are more bonded to earthly relationships, but have not cherished a relationship with our Maker. Father, we are guilty 
of going away from you and going nearer to others. Forgive us, divine maker, I plead with thee this evening. We plead for your cleansing, your washing, and then your infilling of the Holy Spirit that we may be victors in Christ Jesus. Father, we express our desire to you that we want to dry and draw nearer to you. Will you please also draw nearer to us today? I plead, praise, and thank thee for answering, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome, brothers and sisters, to being happily single. Welcome to being happily single. I want to ask, and I hope I get an honest answer. How many of you are happily single? Can I see your hands? I want a very honest. Some of you are struggling whether I should raise or whether I shouldn't. If you're not happy, you are not allowed to raise your hand. But if you're happily single, can I see your hands? Okay, okay. We want to praise God for your honesty. There is a need for us to understand the truth, the joy, the beauty, and the blessing that it is to be happily single. And the Lord wants us to appreciate the gift of what it means to be happily single because when we get ready to establish a home, we really need to know what foundation we're establishing a home upon. The truth is, as I read to you from messages to young people, that the youth trust altogether too much to impulse. They should not give themselves away too easily, nor be captivated too readily by the winning exterior of the lover. As long as one looks good and feels good, and some even say smells good, it seems like that that person can be a great lover. We shouldn't give away ourselves too easily. Courtship, this is the, the worrying part of the passage. Courtship as carried on in this age is a scheme of deception and hypocrisy. Courtship and dating can be one of the most falsified relationships ever on earth. You see two people dating and, uh, for instance, an example is they, they, they decide on the meeting place and the meeting time and they both get ready. The girl puts on her very best. She wants to look her very best. The guy wants to be his very best and smell his very best and look his very best. And when the meeting time happens, they come and meet each other trying to project their very best. And then they wake up the morning after marriage and they see the wife drooling from the side. She no longer looks her best. The wife realizes that after a night of sleep, he doesn't smell so good in the morning. He's not smelling his best. And the problem is the kind of courtship that exists today, uh, they are literally a scheme of deception and hypocrisy because you fall in love with an image of a person and not the person himself. You fall in love with who the person projects to be and not who the person really is. But, but here's what's, what's disturbing. With these courtships, the enemy of souls has far more to do than the Lord. Good common sense, some people say, is needed here, if anywhere, but the fact is it has little to do in this matter. Common sense is not really going to help you when it comes to God-driven courtships. But I, I worry when I read this portion of the passage, with these courtships, the enemy of souls has more to do than the Lord. Why did I talk about being happily single? 
Because you really need to know in your heart whether the relationships you have are watched over and blessed by the Lord or are your relationships blessed by the devil. Because there are many courtships today that are being blessed and abounded and taken care of by the devil himself. So the good question for those in courtship, planning courtship, are you really sure that your courtship is being led and blessed and prompted upon by the savior of your soul? See, when men and women pursue a deceptive courtship, you end up in a marriage that's going to be bulldozed over. And we have many homes today. We have many, many homes today. Some of us come from broken homes today that are an evidence. There are an evidence of the attack of the enemy of souls, who from the very beginning was always attacking homes because he knew if I can make one ungodly man fall in love with an ungodly woman, they will obviously produce an ungodly child. Two sinners cannot produce a saint. Are you still with me? And we begin to understand the concept that the attack has always been upon the home ever since the very beginning of time. Marriage has been one portion of humanity that has been severely attacked. In fact, uh, Patriarchs and Prophets, page 338, it was Satan's studied effort to pervert the marriage institution, to weaken its obligations, lessen its sacredness, for in no surer way could he deface the image of God in man and open the door to misery and vice. Wait a second, wait a second. Through broken homes, through perverted marriages, the devil can deface the image of God than he can in no other way. I'm not sure if you're listening. Those of you planning marriage, you should be trembling right now. Because as we read from Sister White just a while ago, that you can just rush into marriage should not be the only matter occupying and possessing your mind. I mean, the text is clear. Corrupt, broken homes and destroyed marriages and empty lives in empty homes. There is no other better or surer way that the devil has than to use this to completely deface the image of God in man. You don't want to get there and then plead with the Lord, Lord, fix my home when you've already been given counsel how to prepare for a godly home. And so the concept of marriage is not just an event. It is an experience. It is a lifestyle you will have to live with for the rest of your lives. It is important, it is gravely important that we know where our homes are today. I like what the angel said to Samson's mother. In Judges chapter 13 and verse 3, the Bible says, The angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold, now thou art barren and bearest not, but you shall conceive and bear a son. And we know that the command was given, you know, we always have this understanding that the mother was told, yes, you're going to have a child, but you're going to take care of the child. The child will take upon himself the vow of a Nazarite, that he will not shave his hair. He is not going to touch any unclean thing. He's not going to drink any strong drinks. And while all of those were part of a Nazarite vow, many of us forget the direct command of the angel to the mother. Listen carefully. Uh, the angel says, now, therefore, beware... I pray thee, now he's talking to the mother, he says, I pray thee, drink not wine, nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. Again, the angel speaking to the mother says, Mother, make sure you don't drink any wine. Make sure you don't take part in any strong drink. Make sure you don't eat any unclean thing. 
because the angel understood children learn best by example. You have many homes. You have many homes where the father of the home says, uh, son, don't watch too much television. And the son is asking himself, wait a second, dad, but you watch television all day. You hear the mother, uh, son, you need to pray more, but mom, I hardly see you pray. What are you talking about? In fact, one survey held in the church came up with the result that the number one reason why youth are leaving church today is because of hypocrite parents. Are you still listening? The hypocrisy that exists amongst the parents is the number one reason why the youth leave the church because they picture the scene of a Sabbath morning. On a Sabbath morning, you have parents getting ready and the father is shouting at the top of his voice, what are you doing? This and that, don't you know? And he's shouting at the top of his voice and all this is going on in his mind, this rage, this anger. And then they get into the car and they're driving to church and the mother begins to speak. Ah, that deaconess, you know, she thinks she's so smart and this and that. Have you seen? She doesn't even know how to dress. And then they both get to church and the father is, you know, talking, you know, how that head elder is always disturbing him and he thinks he's too smart and he thinks he knows everything in the Bible and then they get to church and the children have been listening to this conversation in the car. When they get out of the car, the, both the parents enter church, the father moves forward, shakes hands with the head elder with a smile on his face, ah, it's so good to see you, happy Sabbath. The mother gets out and the deaconess that she was talking about, oh you look so beautiful today, your dress, that's amazing. So children said, we want nothing to do with church if church teaches hypocrisy. And it's, it's troublesome. It's troublesome. Now, why did the angel have to make sure to warn the mother, make sure you don't do? Because if you don't do it, the son will not be led in that direction. If you don't do it, you leave a better example for your child. Because this is, listen to this, conflict and courage, a beautiful devotional. Of all the sins that God will punish, none are more grievous in his sight than those that encourage others to do evil. Of all the sins that God is going to punish, there is none that is more grievous in God's sight than those sins where you are encouraging others to go in the wrong direction. You got to listen to this very carefully. Why did we emphasize growing closer to God? Because if you don't, if you don't watch your relationship with God now, if you are not connected with God, you enter courtship, you enter any relationship, you enter a marriage relationship, you will lead the husband, the wife, the children in the same footsteps that you have walked in the footsteps of the devil. And by your example, you lead your own children, you lead your own spouse, you lead your own beloved, you lead your own fiance, you lead your own girlfriend or boyfriend, to follow the path of the devil and that not of Jesus Christ. God says he holds you guilty. Greater than any sin you've ever committed, he holds you guilty for leading others to do evil. There's a simple solution. Get closer to God. There's a simple solution. Just learn to get closer to God. I'm going to give you three scenarios before I sit down. I'm going to read to you from Desire of Ages. Just follow through as we read this together. These disciples had been for some time associated with Jesus in active labor. John, James, Andrew, Peter with Philip, Nathaniel, and Matthew. All these individuals are there. Uh, the, the, the passage says, they had been more closely, Nathaniel and Matthew, they had been more closely connected with him than the others and had witnessed more of his miracles. He's talking about the journey of the disciples with Jesus, but there were certain of them 
who were closer to Jesus. Nathaniel and Matthew are specifically picked out. John, James, Andrew, Peter, all of these guys, she says they were more closely connected with him than the others. They, in fact, even witnessed a lot of his miracles. My question is, just how close is God asking you to be to himself? Just how close do we need to get with God before we even begin to think about a relationship? Notice this. Peter, James, and John stood in still nearer relationship to him. So there are the rest of the disciples who were closely intimated with God. But then there's Peter, James, and John who were even in a nearer and a closer relationship to him. They were almost constantly with him, witnessing his miracles and hearing his words. Is that close enough? You have all the other disciples, they were close to God. Peter, James, and John were even closer. Is that close enough? Not really. John pressed into still closer intimacy with Jesus so that he is distinguished as the one whom Jesus loved. There were all the disciples, and you would think they would all be okay with being close to God, but some of them were like, no, we need a little bit more intimacy with Jesus, and they spend more time with Jesus. And then there was John, he says, no, I'm not even satisfied with that. I want still yet more closer. It was he who was so close to God, who was distinguished as the one whom Jesus loved. The Savior loved them all, but there was something special about John, and that was that he had the most receptive spirit. The thing with that is a lot of us have receptive spirits, and all of our reception is towards people around us. Some of us are very receptive to our friends, very receptive to our classmates, very receptive to our roommates. Few are receptive to Christ. He had a receptive spirit. Notice this. He was younger than the others. He was younger than the others. And with more of the child's confiding trust, he opened his heart to Jesus. I want to show you the result of intimacy with Jesus. I want to show you the result of drawing closer to God. Thus, he came more into sympathy with Christ. And check this. Through him, the Savior's deepest spiritual teaching was communicated to his people. John drew the closest amongst all the disciples. God honored him with the book of Revelation. God honored a young lad who came to the Lord in his early teens and walked with him into his late 90s on the Isle of Patmos. And God chose to reveal himself to John and gave him the high honor to reveal the deepest spiritual teaching. Brothers and sisters, we seek to bring people to the Lord in these last days. Evangelism successful evangelism, spirit-filled evangelism is a direct result of your intimacy with God. The closer you are to God, the better you can reveal the deepest spiritual teachings of God to the world. Do you think that's close? Do you think John, okay, I think I need to now aim for John. That's the kind of intimacy I need to have. Let me shock you. The angels of glory find their joy in giving, giving love and tireless watch care to souls that are fallen and unholy. Heavenly beings woo the hearts of men. They bring to this dark world light from the courts above. By gentle and patient ministry, they move upon the human spirit. Why? To bring the lost into a fellowship with Christ, which is even closer than they themselves can know. I'm not sure you're following through. The disciples were close. Peter, James, and John were closer. John was even more closer. 
But angels say, don't you know that if you allow Christ in your life, you as humans will be closer to God, more closer than even we as angels have never been. I don't know if you're still awake. Angels get to be in his explicit presence, his glorified presence, and they veil their faces and they feel unworthy, but they say to us humans, he says, don't you know, if you give your life to Jesus, you will end up closer than we have ever been to our Savior. What is really intimacy to you? Just prayer in the morning and Bible study in the evening? Is that it? What are you aiming for? John-like intimacy? You're aiming for Paul-like intimacy? What are you really aiming for in life? Because angels are telling me, you can get closer than any human or angel has ever been. You think that's close enough? No. I got one last one for you. All who would receive Christ by faith were united to him by a tie closer than that of human kinship. They would become one with him as he was one with the Father. I'll come back to that. As a believer, and doer of his words. Listen to this carefully. As a believer and doer of his words, Jesus' own mother was more nearly and savingly related to him than through her natural relationship. Any mother here will tell you, nothing is more precious to them than their children. But the prophet says Mary was not close to Jesus just because she gave him birth. Even though Jesus came from Mary's womb, the prophet of the Lord tells us that even that mother-son relationship was not as close enough as yours can be as a believer and doer of his words. You think parents and children, that's the closest you can ever be to anyone. That's the closest intimacy. Mary was even closer when she obeyed the words of God than she would ever be as a mother. His brothers would receive no benefit from their connection with him unless they accepted him as their personal savior. But this is, this is, this is what I can get enough of. All who would receive Christ by faith are united to him by a tie closer than that of human kinship they would become one with him as he was one with the Father. Just how close does God want you to be with him? Is it Peter, James, John-like intimacy? No. Is it John-like intimacy? No. Is it angelic intimacy? No. Not until you find yourself so one with the Lord. So one with the Father as Jesus was one with the Father. That's, that's when you are really, really, really close. Brothers and sisters, that's when you can start thinking about a relationship. Are you following? Are you all still there? When you get so close to God... When you get so intimate with God, as intimate as Jesus is with the Father, you're ready to think about marriage. Are you there? And I so boldly, without any regrets and without any apologies, I would say this to you, not until you get there, don't dare think about a relationship. Don't dare think about marrying anyone until we get that close to God because any union created before that is going to lead the other person into the paths of unrighteousness, the same paths that you have been walking, and there is no greater sin in the eyes of God than you taking someone else to walk in the paths of unrighteousness. Just 
How close do you want to be with God? Just how close does he want you to be with him? He says the union that exists between the Father and the Son is the kind of union he wants each and every one of us here to have for his glory and for his purpose alone. Do you know there are homes today where husbands and wives also have not experienced that kind of intimacy? And they struggle. Some after 50, 60 years together, finally get a little bit closer to each other. They begin to understand the inti what intimacy means. Many homes have been wrecked and broken, hopeless in many cases, because they started off by not being that close to God as the Son is with the Father. Just how close would you like to be with your Savior? I'd like you to close your eyes and bow your heads as we close tonight. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. Every head is bowed and every eye is closed. I really want you to ask yourself tonight, some think they're ready for a relationship because they've read many books. Others think, no, I've attended many seminars on marriage and courtship and I'm ready, I think. Others yet are thinking, no, so-and-so uh, has to suggest just the right tips for me and, and just the right steps and the right procedures. And if I have the, the, the order and everything right uh, in the right manner, then I think I'm ready to, to enter any relationship. Well, my brothers and sisters, you do not want to deface the image of God. You don't want to join hands with the devil in defacing the image of God by creating perverted marriages, unholy alliances. But that's going to take an intimacy like you've never known before. That's going to take an intimacy with God like you've never ever seen in your life. The intimacy with the Father just as Jesus has with his Father. If it is your desire to seek that intimacy with God, if you'd like to get closer, closer, and yet closer still, in your homes, if you're married, you still have time, you still have the opportunity and the privilege to get closer. I have friends who are married but don't have children yet. You want to attain that intimacy before you have that child. For those contemplating marriage or in a relationship, you want to attain that intimacy with God before you look forward to a married experience. Closer and closer yet. If there's anyone here, married or unmarried, in a relationship or not in a relationship, but wants to get an experience, that intimacy with their Savior, would you kneel with me as we plead with the Lord in different, different avenues. I want to begin firstly. I want to begin firstly by telling you, I will not call you front. I will not ask you to raise your hands. There are many, many, many of us here who come from homes where our fathers and mothers are not intimate with God. Are you listening to me? We are coming from many different racial, geographical homes that are not close to God, where parents have not set the right example for us. And I want you to just at this moment, as you kneel, first of all, beg with God, Lord, will you please bring my mother, my father, in a closer relationship with Jesus? I want my mother, I want my father to know Jesus like they have never known in their life. Lord, that is my cry and my plea to you this evening. I want my parents to be so close to God, just as Jesus is with the Father. I pray that 
upon my mother and father. Can you please pray for your family, your parents, uncles and aunts, grandparents, brother or sister some far away, but above all these matted relationships in our homes. Would you please pray for your mother, for your father, to know Jesus like they've never known before. Please pray that prayer right now as we get ready to enter into our next phase of prayer. I want you to pray now, especially for a friend, a brother, or a sister who you know is in a relationship. And you see that it's not going in the direction where God has desired that relationship to go. Maybe the person they're in a relationship with is not in the faith. Or maybe they claim to be Christian, claim to be even Adventist, but their ways are of an unbeliever. Being a believer is not carrying a baptismal certificate. No, that's not what it is. And so many are getting ready to be unequally yoked. Many are getting ready to be unequally yoked right now. And they're being deceived by the devil into thinking, hey, he or she is an Adventist. You can't go wrong with that. I want you to plead for that friend. I want you to cry before God, please, for that brother, that sister, that distant relative that you know that is in a courtship. Maybe a deceptive courtship. Maybe a courtship that is being blessed by the devil right now plead for them and make a resolution before the Lord. Beg for the Holy Spirit to help you intercede for them until that relationships are completely sorted out, fixed, or even broken, if that's what it's going to take. Plead for them, please. Plead for them that God will intervene in a major way in their lives. For the next few minutes, will you please plead for relationships around you that need Jesus and Jesus alone.
finally, I would request you to pray for yourself. Plead with the Lord, please, for all of us. Plead for yourself, Lord. Lord, please help me. Help me to draw closer to you, for you have promised that when I draw nearer to you, you will draw nearer to me. Lord, will you help me get closer to God? Will you help me right now, Lord? For if I am not close to God, I will lead my brothers and sisters away. I will lead them in the paths of unrighteousness, even unknowingly many times, just by my corrupt example. Father, sanctify me, please. Cleanse this tongue of mine that I may speak pure words. Wash this filthy brain that I may think pure thoughts. Chastise my flesh and afflict it down that I may not treasure my flesh but I may learn to live in the Spirit. Father, discipline me. Discipline me, Lord, that I may be a better example to others. Lord, draw me closer to you, please. Draw me closer to you before it's too late. Draw me closer to you, please. Pray for your own personal, intimate relationship with Jesus. Almighty Father, we want to thank you. We want to thank you, Lord, for you have been long-suffering with us. I want to thank you, Father, for you have been patient with us. I praise thee, Lord, you've put up with all our mess. You've had to stand around and watch how we made a fool out of ourselves and led many others in the paths of the devil. Oh, forgive us, dear Lord. Forgive us, I plead. Father, I praise thee how you have stood by our side when you didn't have to, Lord. We didn't deserve for you to stand by us. But you chose because you committed yourself to us. In the word you spoke and said that I am determined to save you. Father, we give thee glory. We give thee glory for none, none can love us like Jesus. Father, I praise you for giving us this opportunity to learn, learn deeper and deeper still that there is a need for godly homes to be established in these last days. Oh, Father, how aggressively we are attacked, how aggressively our relationships are attacked, how vehemently our homes, our marriages are attacked. How aggressively the young ones in the house are attacked. Father, Father, we need Jesus. You have seen our pain. You've seen our tears. You've seen the struggle, Lord. There is a brother today that needs help. He needs Jesus to sanctify and purify his heart that he may have a spirit-filled relationship 
There is a sister that's doubting. There is a sister that's not sure. Lord, she needs to come back to Jesus that he may guide her in the right direction. Lord, please, please, please have mercy upon your children. We give our lives to you tonight. We give our hearts to you tonight, pleading with you, Lord, that at the end of this day and the beginning of a new week, we may find ourselves closer and closer and closer yet in all eternity. May we keep on drawing closer and closer to you, dear Lord. We praise thee. We praise thee and praise thee. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. to praise God. I have some announcements to make before we depart. For those of you who know, the Seventh-day Adventist Church was organized in the month of May 1863. So this is going to be celebrating 153 years of Adventism. We are planning to meet right in Ayala Mall's Solanar. If you go to SNR, you just look across. I'm sure you know this. There is a beautiful white tent right under the tent. We will be representing Adventist Church. If you know that God has blessed you because you're an Adventist and you want to tell the world that you're an Adventist, most of the churches around will be gathering. Solanad Ayala Malls, May 19th is a Thursday. At 6.30, we will meet. Uh, we also have very special ministry for widows, for widowers, those that come from broken homes. Next week, we have some very beautiful fasting and prayer. It is entitled Relieve, like how we got closer. It's going to be from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. in Tagaita in the Divine Word Seminary. If you know someone who is hurting, send them there. If you would like to have more information, this is our Facebook page. It's called the International Prayer Festival. I also would like to bring a very important announcement about PYC, Philippine Youth for Christ. It's going to be from June 1st to 5th at 1000 Missionary Movement. If you want more information, please go to www.pycweb.org. Shall we all stand, please? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the sweet communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with each and every one of us in a very special way with everyone who has intentionally and deliberately decided to get closer to the Lord Jesus from now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. If you want a special prayer and if you would like us to pray for you, we will be here for a couple of minutes. You can feel free to come forward. We will be very happy to pray. God loves you and have a wonderful and a spiritful experience with the Lord. Amen.